All right, guys, we're back. Uh, the uh, Justin Brooklyn adventure in our brand new location with our very first special handsome guest. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> a little nice little office. Stepping it up. Joseph Valtellini, uh, great friend, uh, longtime friend, yeah. training partner, coach. More of more of a coach. I'm always, I'm a, I trained with you a couple of times, and it was just a beating. So, uh, and yeah, so let's get her going. Josh, you got some words you want to say, don't you? Yeah, okay. yeah. So real quick, we just want to give a, a shout out to our sponsors for this episode. Uh, first and foremost, Vintage Speed and Metal. Uh, if you guys go to the website vintagespeedandmetal.ca, you can get 10% off store wide on any merch that they have hats, sweaters, t shirts, and all that stuff. Just use the code JBA. Uh, we also want to thank um, Mortgage Matt Northcott. If anybody knows, he's like the most inspirational dude I know. I don't know about you, Brooklyn. You probably know more inspirational people yeah, than me. Yeah. But uh, Business Me. is a great guy. <laughs> you can go follow him on Facebook. Financial advice, uh, mortgage, mortgages and stuff like that. He's a great dude. And then uh, we just got a new sponsor uh, just this week, the Rehab Lab. Maybe yep. you can give a bit more information on that. Yeah, Melissa Bis Biscardi. She's an osteopath and concussion specialist, actually. And she's a uh, fantastic uh, person and helped me out a lot as well with uh, a lot of things I had going on with my body and my brain. So mm -hmm. check out the Rehab Lab for sure. I'm sure, we we'll be talking about some of that yeah, with me we'll, too. We'll, we'll, get we'll get into that. We'll get into that. We'll get into that as well. Sure. So, all right, where to start? Where to start? Um, actually, okay. Oh, well, keep it so. Where are you heading next? Heading next. I'm actually home for two months. So really? I'm uh, the commentator for Glory Kickboxing, yep. and it's got me busy. Yeah. Uh, I think in the last three months, I went from. Hold on. Let me see. If, France, Germany. I did Chicago, the BTC in Niagara, China, and Amsterdam in. Three months? Holy shit, that's yeah, crazy. Too much. Yeah. I mean, I hate planes. I hate sitting on planes. Oh, I know. I hate plain food. Drives me, makes me sick to my stomach. I can't even go on Air Canada and look at the damn food plate. It makes me really? sick. Really? Eh? The movies on there, can't even look at it. I've been on the plane so much. It's been a disaster I on that plane. I, I hate flying too, man. I have a bunch yeah. of drinks and just try to go to sleep, man. See, I what's care. happened to me? I don't know. All of a sudden, I've got in vertigo for plane, on the plane. Weird. Just two years ago, it's all of a sudden, boom, this vertigo where I get sick on the plane. I'm getting off. I'm all nauseous. I got all this gas brewing in my stomach. It's, it's <laughs> not fun. So that, that ruins it for me. Like once I get to the glory event, it's awesome. You're here with friends. You get to hear, be with colleagues, you, you know, conversations with some of the best martial artists in the world. But then you go on the plane home and then you're sick to your stomach and you're throwing up sometimes at the airport. Vertigo is nasty. So yeah, I don't get that. I just nasty. physically, I don't get like anything on airplane. I just like emotionally, I crumble, man. I like, yeah. I stress out for like days, know when I'm going to fly and then I'll go away. And I'm like the whole time I'm away, I've stressed out knowing I got to fly, really? fly home. It? I don't is know, man. The, I'm the too, tight space. I'm claustrophobic. <laughs> So yeah. feeling that tight space drives me you know, nuts. I uh, I used to love flying like everywhere, like short flights, long flights. And I think it was my I think it was my second flight home from Tokyo. I just fucking snapped. And like now after that, every single time I fly, I'm really? like, oh, so I'm like, just, like just literally just get shit faced. I, sn like, I snapped once. It was uh, one of my earlier pro fights. I'm sitting on the plane, New York. You're always in that smaller plane, and all of a sudden turbulence hit. Boom! And we did this big drop. Then all of a sudden, it's like I started hearing the engine noise more, and started. I was like, "Man, what's yeah. happening?" So since that day, I, I, I only wear noise head cam, yeah, the noise sure. canceling, because yep. I need to block out that sound. Because if I hear that sound, it just gives me like that anxious feeling, man. That I'm it's exactly annoying. the same. And yeah. then 16 hours to China, I'm hearing that. Yeah. Just yeah. ridiculous. Get, getting noise canceling was a game changer yeah. for me oh, as well. The best helps helps out huge for sure. Oh, yeah. You need it. You need it. So do you know where you're going next? Or yeah, you, you uh, the next one's Amsterdam again. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah. We're there about three, four times a year, which is cool. That's so fun cool. little city. Yeah, it, it's sad to say that. Yeah, you get a little bit of this, but it's. It's actually, when you go to the same city, like, you don't want to go out anymore. Like, how many times have I been to the red light district? Like, that's yeah. enough. Like, I don't really care yeah. to go again. So I'm actually, it's sad to say, but sometimes I'm, like, sick of Amsterdam. I'm sick of Paris. Like, um, we always say, like, ooh, look at us. We're in Amsterdam getting sick of it. But it's, like, you see a lot of hotels. It's a lot of those interviews. It's not yeah. as fun. I mean, how many fight weeks have you been in? I know. It's, like, you're in a brand new city. You don't even leave the hotel. I, and that's, I had this conversation the other day with someone. Like, everyone thinks it's glorious. I'm like, dude, we're sitting in a smelly hotel with like four dudes that have been cutting weight all week. It's, yeah, yeah. It fucking sucks. I've, I've gotten bougie, though. What's that? Like, I, I've, I've been bougier. Like, I mean, yeah. if my fighters now take my ass for my own room. Oh, like, yeah, I travel for sure. so much that the luxury of having my own room is like on the contract now. Yeah. You know, you want me to work with you? I was like, I'd rather not get paid and have my own room than I, just I agree. Sit in a room where now you're using my blanket to cut weight and it's all wet and there's towels everywhere your scales i'm an ocd neat i want things clean yeah. like man i pack in packing cubes i got packing cubes all organized i'm like super ocd so when someone else messes up my space i don't like yeah i, I 
and you just got to have your uh, that your, time away. Yeah, because you're surrounded by people the whole time you're there. So when you need that time out, you got to take it, man. Yeah. I'm going to hide in my room. Oh yeah, and I, like it's yeah, man. It's not the life isn't nearly as cool as people yeah. think. You yeah. know what I mean? It's a lot of work, a lot of stress, and yeah, you really don't like. Yeah, it's not as glorious as it sounds. Yeah. It looks. Right? You recently went to Japan again. Uh, That's pretty awesome. I was in no? actually. No, I was in Singapore. Oh okay. Yeah, we went for the world champion for like had like um. It was uh, like called Gamma. It was a uh, global association of mixed martial arts. Like it was uh, supposed to be amateur, but it was all, pro- it was just amateur rules. So it was all okay. pro. So I had a couple, I went with Team Canada as a coach and I had nice. brought one of my own kids and he made it right to the finals. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, it was a really good experience. I fucking loved it there. It was a little, a little pricey, but yeah, and yeah, that yeah. flight, man, fuck it. Oh, that was what? It was, uh, sing- on the way home was four hours from Singapore to Manila and then it was okay. like 17 from there yeah. and like oh man it's like a time yeah. warp it's fucked it's brutal I and it's these it. layovers man too because when you hit a layover like oh I'm, I'm, I'm done and they're like oh, I got another yeah. 18 hours home like yeah. It's not luxury, it's as luxurious as people think sometimes, yeah. those damn planes. And if you're doing it every other week too, that's where it's a pain. Like if I went once a year to Japan or Singapore, it's cool, it's nice. But when you're every other week, come home, now adjust to the time zone and then you're going back again, like yep. it's the time change that drives yep. me nuts. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work. So, okay, so you got, you're a glory commentator. Yeah. You own your own own your mm-hmm. own gym, right? Bazooka, kickboxing, and MMA. Yes, you do. Yeah. Uh, what's going? Your teacher as well? Are you still? It used are, to be. You're used done now. To be, yeah. Are yeah. you? With the commentary, I had to give it up. Yeah, because it I was knew, either one or the other at that point. Because I, I knew you were juggling both for a while, right? You're yeah. or trying to. Or you had, a I had year three up. things. You know, yeah. I was uh, the commentary, which took me away. I mean, as a school teacher, you feel bad for the kids. The, I, we had 14 glory shows last year. If I had to leave a week at each time, like it's not fair to the kids. I don't get the sick days, especially as a teacher, get two months off a year. Then I'm going to ask for all these weeks in between. Um, at that point, uh, I just made the decision to yeah. give it up. But yeah, I was teaching, commentating and running my gym. Yeah. All three amazing things. Started hating all three. Yeah. I hated everybody. I hated it. I just, it's too much. It was yeah. too many positive things happening at once. And that was stressful. Uh, that's a what horrible you know? thing. It is. I, I, what I, I mean, no, I get the re- same thing with you. Too, I understand though. what you're saying. Yeah. So right, is, is, uh, you're enjoying it more and more manageable now that you've. Oh yeah. yeah? Like I'm, I'm actually stressed out. I got up at what? 7 a.m. to come see you today. I don't <laughs> get up at uh, 7 a.m. no more, but yeah. it's pleasant. Thank you. You got <laughs> Thank you. Up. Thank you. Yeah. No, I was like. Um, it was hard getting up though, cause I'm not used to getting up to alarm clocks anymore, Yeah, but I still train. Like, I mean, I train more now than I ever have in my yeah. career. Yeah. And you, cause you enjoy it Cause now? I have the time too. Yeah. Like I used to have to work and spend eight hours teaching kids, which is great, but <sighs> I can do my weight training now. I can do my kickboxing. I work with different professionals throughout the day. And then I teach and coach at night. So I'm now twice a day where when I was competing, it was only once a day. Mm-hmm. So, it was so nice. when you were still competitive, did you... Uh, Because I know how I felt by the end of my career. Were were you still enjoying training even though there was all that stress to compete? See, the the issue with me was I kind of got pulled out a little early than Mm -hmm. I would have liked. So I was in like the peak of wanting to dominate everything. Yeah, Like there was no any other question in my mind. It was continue to win this belt, continue to dominate, to be the legend. Like I was still like overly motivated. If I maybe defended 10 times, you know, and it starts getting a little bit boring winning more belts, which, but I wasn't at that point. So Mm -hmm. I kind of was, in my mind, I still had a a lot of fight left in me. So that's why I train so much now. It's because I'm I'm not done. Like, I still have so much feeling and passion into the sport. And um, it, it drives me nuts. People are like, oh, look at you now. You're in better shape. I was like, yeah, of course I am. Because I'm a martial artist. That uh, whole process of me fighting was just the next step to get me better. You yeah. know? So, I yeah. mean, I don't. it's not the end of me now. What? I have to stop doing martial arts now yeah. just because yeah. I don't compete? Yeah. So, for me, it's just more learning, more coaching. The more I commentate, the better my IQ gets. For the sure. The more I'm coaching, the, the better I am as a coach and starting to see things. Like, mm-hmm. I've actually, I actually prefer now to coach MMA than I do with kickboxing. Really, eh? It's different. It's new. It's unique. There's mm-hmm. more risk. It's more fun to me. Like, I, I call every single high-level kickboxing fight for the last four years yeah and then i have to re-watch them when that fighter fights again i re-watch it to study it's like i had enough of watching kickboxing for a bit so that's why like i watch all the ufcs i love coaching guys uh it's just it's that to me and just being that cage is different so different is good for me i need those little bit of See, I'm, change i'm backwards i hardly ever watched jiu-jitsu or mma i just watch really uh, kickboxing all the time yeah. now it's what i enjoy the most uh, for some reason because like i think it was like uh for me the last few years like we were trained together a little bit and then 
like that was I never knew how to kickbox. So everything was brand new when it was learning again. It was made it more interesting, right? What I've been doing the other stuff for years and years, it just gets old, you know. So mm-hmm. like it, again, yeah, it's fun to learn, right? But so, what was this that whole Thailand experience for you? Yeah. What was that from? It's just you always wanted to do it. Did I you just go through just, a phase where you just want to fight again. I always want to fight. I want to fight right fucking now. You know what I mean? Well, you look at me now. What are we doing? Let's go. I just. Um, I just, man, it's always got the fire in me to do it, but my body with MMA and Jiu-Jitsu, my neck just can't take it, right? And then yeah. I start sparring and like training, kickboxing, actually hitting pads and like doing properly because we never learned that. We just went and fought, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So like, and then I started training with, with Kalajundik and Kendall and all these guys and I'm like, fuck. And they, I'm like, I should, I should probably fun. kick yeah. someone in the head. And then, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Joven from, uh, I can't even pronounce Joven's last name, but he's like, if you're going to fight, come over to Thailand. I'm mm. like, that makes sense. Like if you're going to do one, go do to it the right. Do yeah. it right. So we just, I'm like, fuck it, let's go. And it was like scary. Cause like, like you, t- you fight in Thailand, you don't know who you're fighting. It's not yeah, like you yeah, have yeah. a game plan. You know what I mean? You see this guy, you're like, okay, we're going to train for this. You just show up. And he's like, only been training since he was in three years I old. Know, yeah. That's all right. But he, that poor kid had a bad night. So yeah. I'm, I'm, he finished him in the first round too. Yeah. Yeah, the hands was, usually right. He got honest. He got kind of caught in the ropes and he sucker punched him. But whatever, That's win, right. win, win, win to win. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I just it's just uh, I, I I was motivated and I had uh, people behind me back me up and they'd go for it. And it was one of the best things I ever did. Yeah. But then now, then the crash afterwards, you're like, oh, now what? Now what? Right? Because yeah. I can't do it again. So like, your neck at all? You can't roll at all with uh, I, competitively or no? No, I haven't. T- I haven't competed in jiu-jitsu in like 20 years yeah. right last time i competed i was purple belt or something like that so now i'm like uh i've got a great instructor my at my place uh named rodrigo Asioli, and uh so he comes and teaches all the classes so it's fun i oh, just beautiful. i just show up and train now yeah, and i yeah. do the technique the drill and then i step out when people have started to roll and maybe in a couple months i'm feeling a little bit better i'll try you know that's gotta be hard for you though eh? I, I'm, it's it's hanging out at the strip club man yeah, yeah, you, yeah. you stare you stare that's at pussy it. all night but you can't touch that's it it, it yeah. sucks you right? have to buffet but you can't eat <laughs> yeah, man. what are you gonna yeah. do well your way yeah you can say it like that too yeah i, I got the my nicer way, way. <laughs> i got my there way there we go i got my way so um you still like coaching a lot though oh, eh? i love it yeah eh? i'm still young i'm only yeah. 34 you know for me like i'm just I think that's with the coaching, like the next phase for me, I think my goal is going to be to get more UFC guys on my yeah. roster, try to build that. Um, Cause I mean, the commentary is great, but how many times can I travel 14, 15 times yeah. a year? At and some then, point, at gonna... some point it's going to be exhausting. Like it, it's hard to have, you know, girlfriends and family and, and stuff because it's too difficult. Yeah. Literally every, you know, every other week I'm gone. Yeah. You it, know, like it's just, it's difficult. Yeah, it is, it is it, it, totally, man. That life on the road, but the UFC can take you in the same direction, right? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It can be every other week yeah. as well, right? But so, I mean, you're there at least fun. It's not there. Yeah. I'm not doing the commentary interviews. I'm not doing all the sit down. I don't have to do rehearsals. Like, yeah, you people got one, think one thing to work a about, show. Right? Oh, yeah, you go to you just show up on fight day and you call fights. No, it's like you got to interview every fighter before, and then all of a sudden you're doing all these pre fight interviews on tape. And then fight day, like the, the event might start at 6 p.m., but I'm there at like 12 30. Mm-hmm doing rehearsals, having to get changed, having to do pre-taped opens. And then the event is like almost six hours because the yeah. time we do our, our prelims, our fight, uh, super fight series and our main card. So I'm literally talking for freaking 10 hours. So yeah. it's not as easy as, you know, people think it's long, it's fun, but yeah. it's exhausting. And man. countless hours of research on each guy to know what oh, they're yeah. all about and everything, right? Yeah. And I mean, stops. I've worked with some amazing guys like Mauro Ronaldo, now with Todd Grisham. Like those guys are pros. So those guys can close their eyes and do it in a heartbeat. Like, I mean... I'm still basically, you know, I'm I'm in the big leagues and I'm learning as I'm going. Yeah. I didn't have a chance to do smaller shows or build myself up. And our last show, man, uh, my biggest public speaking, I would speak at my school in front of kids, 30 people. Yeah. Yeah. Now all of a sudden there was 32,000 people I'm wow. having to talk in front of them. Like that's, that's new to me. Like that's... F- I was terrified, sweat dripping everywhere. Like my face was covered. Like that's 32,000 people, you know, listening to me speak in an arena. Like I was terrified. Yeah. It's also way harder than people think. Like you there, it's complicating. You're, all you're doing is talking about what's happening in front of you right now. I'm like, yeah. that's not so fucking easy, yeah, man. Yeah. Like it's on the fly. It's fast. You have to know, like you can't, to be really, really good at it, you can't bullshit your way through it. You got to yeah. be pro and you got to practice, right? And it's your voice changes too, right? Mm-hmm. Like one of my big thing is like uh, Todd, who I work with now is a big yeller. So I'm like, oh my God, not going to do and then if I go in there, yeah, Todd, that was great. You know, okay. like, so trying to match the levels is yeah, right. it's something that's difficult as well. Like you have to work with your partner well, which I think is good and fun. But I think the hardest part for me is more the, the, the interviews. Mm-hmm. I think um, 
talking about fights easy, but now it's my turn to go into the ring and I have to find the right questions to interview you. Mm. I think that sometimes could be the challenging phrasing questions. It's more like the skill of journalism, not the questions itself, but yeah. like how do you like put the questions together where it flows well? They understand mm. it. They're getting the right answer. So I think the journalism part is the part that I'm um, constantly working at. Yeah. It's hard too because uh, – like you got you you get to you've seen it from the other side where people you've done a million interviews yeah and they fucking suck because people always come at you with the same the same stuff. boring questions right yeah, so yeah. like you don't want to be that guy either right yeah. you want to you want to give your guy a reason to talk and Absolutely. bring out the best in him as well it's but different. I find the in ring part it's hard for that yeah. in ring you because have it's like you have seconds one and I'm gonna be honest with you fighters are pretty terrible people to interview. Yeah. I mean, it's very difficult. They just don't have a, sometimes there's no personality or they don't want to talk. And like, I can go up to someone, oh man, like, great, man. Uh, great fight. You know, not the best fight of your career. How are you feeling? I feel good. Yeah. And they're like, uh, okay. Like, yeah. all right, next question. So you have to constantly go on the fly instead of like, if you gave someone who's great at talking, like, man, that was the greatest fight. You hand them the mic, they're going off. They're going to dictate where they want the interview to go. It's not always one, two word answers. So mm -hmm. some interviews can be great. And then you go to China where I'm, the question to the Chinese translator, back to the Chinese fighter, back to the Chinese trend. And it's just too much, man. Yeah. I think, yep. I think they should be a lot more selective in their interviews. Like mm. for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I believe that as well because yeah, these guys, uh, a lot of them are, are just not just athletes, but they're not entertainers. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. They don't understand it's that It's not part. WWE, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. Like right. if you had those guys, if, if everybody was a Conor McGregor, it'd be incredible. You yeah. Know? I find like the UFC is actually a lot better than a lot of boxing and you know, oh, kickboxing boxing's because, bad. because they, they know they're expected to do something afterwards. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it is sport. It is WWE, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So everyone's trying to, half of them come off like fucking idiots, but at least they're trying to entertain yeah. the crowd when they're done, right? So yeah, like God, yeah, there's so many things people don't understand about your job, like in that in that part of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like there's a lot to it. You're not just standing there talking. So, um, so let's backtrack a bit mm -hmm. if you don't mind. How uh, do you want to talk about why you retired? Or you sure, okay, you okay matter, with yeah. that? Yeah. It's awareness. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So why did you retire, Joe? <laughs> um, so after winning the world title, it was concussions, man. I mean, the sport's brutal. Um, as much as I love the sport, I know there's a side that sucks to it. I mean, there was always, and I mean, you can probably speak for it. When we were competing, there was, we knew this word concussion, but we didn't really believe it. We didn't mm -hmm. think it was a thing. Like, I mean, oh, you, you lost your fight. You got knocked out. Cool. You'd go back, you train, or you get better, or you get knocked down, or then you go to spar. You're, you're, oh, a bell ringer is just a bell ringer. You know, mm -hmm. you're fine. Um, and then it's just, I didn't think about it, but things started adding up and I was playing, uh, it's weird to say, but I was a kicker and punter. And I still got concussions because I played for a crappy team. I played for UFT. <laughs> we lost every game in five years. And I got hit on kickoffs and stuff like that. So I remember one game against Queens. I got, uh, this is as an amateur. I got hit by a, a blocked punt. Went to, you know, recover the ball. Got hit. Boom. And then all of a sudden we went out after we got home to our and drinking. I, like, I can't drink a beer. You know, I started throwing up. I didn't feel good. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know that was a sign of being a concussion. Two, three weeks later, I think I had my uh, fourth, third amateur fight as a kickboxer. All of a sudden, boom, I, the guy, I was almost finished him in the first round. Referee grabs me. Uh, the bell went and Buddy hit me twice after the bell. Again, don't remember much of the second, third round. After that amateur fight, started throwing up again. So, I mean, two back-to-back -back ones and then like... Um, I would spar and all of a sudden like I'd hit a jab and be like, man, why am I getting headaches off a little jab? I didn't know it was concussion symptoms. This is still as an amateur. So I would just go, oh, maybe we should just drink more water. That helped. and get. So, I mean, I think it was the accumulation of not understanding what concussions were when we were younger and understanding them. And then uh, I went to Japan, had to fight twice in one night. Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting dropped in the finals against Nikki Holdskin. Amazing fight. Yeah, it was good. It was so fun. cool, man. Still don't like it. I think I've of only course. watched it like once or twice. I, I know. I won't rewatch those ones. I it's, one of my I favorite, it's one of my favorite fights of okay. all time. Thank you. I, like, I always loved you, but I watched the way you, like, it didn't go your way, but I watched the way you went out. And like, yeah. dude, dude, you got the biggest dick I've ever seen. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah. You need <laughs> to. Come on. <laughs> like, no, man, that's yeah. like, people, sorry, I'd say go out on your shield. You know, mean not to cut you off, but like, everyone talks like they will. Very no. few people will. Yeah. And you fucking did. Oh, for sure. So, man, that was cool. And they have 100,000 US dollars on the line. Gold <laughs> belts, the dream. Like, yeah. of course I am, man. Yeah, man, that was cool to watch. Yeah. So. It, it's stupid to say. I mean, I say it now because I think my mind frame is different. But when you're in those moments for me, it was more than just money losing. Of course, that's, it was why, like, you're that's why you're do there. Do or die. Like, yep. I mean, I had talked. I had self-talked 
you know, before the ring being like, I will come out of this, the champion. I don't care what happens to me, my life. Like at that point, you're in warrior mode, you know, like yeah. do or die. So after that fight, whatever, I mean, <clears throat> didn't go my way, but I ended up going right back. I was like, man, my sparring is lacking a bit. Went right back into hard sparring and, and a lot of good, like I brought in boxers to spar with. I was sparring with uh, Steve Rolls on a regular who just recently fought Triple G. So mm -hmm. I went right for the best boxers, trained with them, sparred with them. And then unluckily in my world title fight, I took a knee. And then the symptoms of the concussions just took too long to heal. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in a dark room for a little bit. I was just like, man, it's like the amount of money you make in the sport, the longevity. If, if I'm out for a year and I can only get paid every time I fight. Um, <clears throat> so I took a good year to assess, see things out. And in that year, I got, uh, I got uh, asked to do some commentary. We kind of pitched it. Um, one of my best friends, Costa Gladiano, was like, hey, man, mm -hmm. you should try this while we're recovering. We pitched uh, something to glory. Then they uh, they took me on for two shows. They liked me. And then they offered me a contract that was significantly more than what I was making fighting. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> it's been four years. I can do this job forever. Um, I think without the commentary, there would have been a lot of men that wanted to get back in there. But I think the job I'm in now, I get more TV time. Um, it's been, actually made me in a, in a weird way more popular. Mm -hmm. um, I get to, you know, the people I'm around all the time so i mean it ended up being a blessing um because even now like the current champions like if they keep fighting where are they going to go from there is i think the post um fight career is one of the hardest things for fighters fight hardest things for athletes so i think that i had the you know i i proud i prided myself in you know finishing school being a teacher being educated doing things scientifically and so to not take care of my brain health would have been just the, the bad yeah mistake, yeah right for sure so yeah uh retirements i've been retired for 15 years man it fucking yeah. sucks i still dream about it every day really you know for sure i don't handle it well man like still i have have massive issues with because i see myself as a fighter still oh yeah it's right still and then me. right and so i don't i don't handle it very well man it makes me depressed and i get anxious and yeah, whatever, oh, yeah. Right? so there's there's times now where like i'm looking at the divisions now and it's like i'm calling like the division i was the champion in yeah. you know like i never lost my belt so I, like i look at these guys i'm like in my head i'm like man i'm a three division champion in my head Everyone's like, oh, really? I'm like, I'm a three division champion, man. Everyone's like, yeah. I'm like, I'll beat the welterweight, I'll beat the middleweight, and I'll beat the light heavyweight champ. Like the light heavyweight, Joe's like, yeah, I'm about two oh nine now. I don't need to cut no way. Like <laughs> in my mind, I'll beat anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's like, you know, Rico Verhoeven, the heavyweight champ. I was like, man, let me put on twenty pounds. I'll fight him. Like my head, like I'll fight anyone, anytime. Like I've always had that mentality. And we have a new killer, a Brazilian guy named Alex Pereira, who's just oh my god, he's terrifying. Yeah. yeah, big hands, like uh, mean looking, and everyone's like, oh, nobody wants. If I'm like, I would fight a man. Shit. <laughs> like, if you gave me an opportunity and everyone's like, nobody wants to fight a man, if that opportunity was there, I would have jumped up a weight class. Like, a lot of fighters don't have that old school mentality. Mm. Like, look, when you were growing up, man, in the sport, sometimes there wasn't even weight classes. Yeah. Some of the guys were just jumping up in weight. Like, there was even no 135, 145. Yeah. So those guys were jumping up to lightweight divisions. Oh, monkey, like, yeah, monkey I fought, was just monkey say, fight like 155. Yeah. At that time, he was like pre, 125, yeah, pre pubescent <laughs> boy. He was like yeah. 120 pounds. Crazy. You and that, they're going up, but weight classes didn't care. Now you go to an event and it was like, oh, the fighter's two pounds heavier than you. No, I'm going to pull my guy out for one or two pounds. Like, I just, everyone focuses too much on that weight number. And I think mm -hmm. it's going to make a huge difference. Like, well, you see everyone going things. up now, right? <laughs> yeah. Everyone's going up now to, to their more natural weight. Everyone, especially like the 155ers are all going up 170 because yeah. they all perform better. And at the end of the day, like, especially with the way the UFC is, is like, you can win all the fights you want. Like, there's no ranking system anyway. So you actually got, you got to go perform at your best and yeah. like actually perform, like not win, perform. So now you can go lose, but if you go throw down, you're going to get another fight, right? Yeah. Where it didn't used to be like that. It used to be just numbers. You had to win, had to win. Yeah. So you got to put yourself in a position where you could take more abuse and yeah. you could fight harder for longer because that's what's going to get you paid in the end. Is the more it's not about winning. It's now it's the most violent. You know what I mean? And yeah. so that's I think that's why guys are coming in at more natural weight classes as well. Yeah, right? I think so. I think it's better anyways. <laughs> yeah, like we just talked about concussions. Yeah. So well, oh, that's, that's one of the, one of the best th reasons. That's the thing, right? Like yeah. when you're um you're way more susceptible to, to getting concussed when you're drying yourself out oh, right? yeah. to cut weight to get out there, right? You're sucking all the water Did out you of your cut brain. a lot? Uh, not too bad in my, my first like half of my career, I fought at 170 and I walked around at 170. Mm. And then, uh, then I met up with George and I was like, fuck that. I'm going to 155. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, so I, so he was, he was that much bigger at that time. He too, just, or? he just, he just grabbed me and I was like, fuck. Like yeah, I knew yeah. We were 20 seconds into that fight. I'm like, this is going to end fucking bad. He just, I never felt anyone like, 
Mm -hmm. the, I trained with Pearson, and Pearson's a freak. Yeah. Like, oh, he, yeah. he grabbed, like, he just slapped me around my whole career. And then I grabbed, and then George grabbed me. I was like, oh, God. And really? Yeah, hey. he just, I was helpless, man. Like, actually helpless. So I knew after that, I'm like, he was a big guy, and he's also like a freak, right? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, he's, yeah, ridiculous. He's a, so. I, but after that fight, I did some soul searching. I'm like, dude, you got to diet. You got to cut down. So I was maybe cutting 12, 13 pounds back then, which now okay. isn't even very much. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? But back then, we didn't know how to cut like weight. Like through whole camp or just 24 hours? Uh, usually like two days before. And mm -hmm. we were, we didn't know how to do it. There was no yeah, water no loading. You're just sweated out, sit in the sauna, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. else, starve, right? I could do 12 pounds now. It's a fucking joke. But yeah. back then, like... Me and Shaw were in Tokyo. We we're in an underground parking garage for like six hours with a skipping rope and a sauna suit, right? Do like, yeah. yeah. So, but uh, I think uh, they with that we need more weight classes or or there's going to be better regulations because now yeah. they put in things where like they're claiming hydration tests and this and that, but like it's all kind of random anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you should be you should there should be a cap on how much you should really be able to cut, but you can't do that unless you add more weight classes. I think. Do you understand this one FC weight cutting thing? Yes. Uh, okay. uh, not Explain it to me. Not exactly. So I think what they do is <clears throat> there is – I think they run a hydration test when you get there. And then uh, then you have to weigh in again on fight day and then they weigh you post as well. And they give you like a percentage. Okay. You can't be – you have to always be within 10 or something like that, 10%. You like that? Or? I think it makes it a bit safer. Yeah. Like Shudo was like that, but they never actually like followed they through followed on through it, it, right? Yeah. They're like, you can't be more than – 12 pounds and i'm like oh, i'm 15 and you guys aren't checking so i don't give a shit yeah, yeah right? of course so i don't know um have you been to a one fc yet no oh, man i heard they're good incredible really yeah it's like i don't know i haven't been to a glory either so i can't compare it but you've been to a million ufcs and they're kind of they're fun but there's like this american kind of yes, vibe to yes, it yes, right yes. like one fc made my hair stand up really? yeah it was cool it was like old school Japanese yeah, yeah. MMA. It was like they, big walkouts oh, and like cool. yes. 50 foot screens and That's the best fireworks. Part. Yeah, it was cool. See, Glory does a similar thing. Like when we when the fighters walk out, you're not allowed to walk out with your team, your corner. Mm -hmm. The fighter has to come out individually. We have a big catwalk. It's elevated. They got LEDs in the back, which is nice. You're it, it looks good. It looks clean. It looks good. It looks like a uh, at WWE, it looks like the old school Japan. And so mm -hmm. I think it's nicer. Like a UFC I, uh, and boxing, it's really messy. You see everyone around them, the security. It just, it's not as cleanly. And, like, and it's it's generic now too, yeah. where every walkout's almost the same, right? And there's, there's, I find their UFC is focused on statistics, not mm. the martial arts side of it, right? Everything's like how many takedowns, this and that. And they're go they run through all this shit. And instead instead of making these guys look like gladiators, you know what I mean? Which mm. that's their moment. And you want the people you want to make them stars for larger than their life for the people, you know what I mean? But the UFC has this thing where they just pump everyone through so fast. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. They're not giving the time into like the production of like you know, blowing them up, right? And that's why I liked about one. It was like, they made everyone in there like- Feel like a superstar. Fucking cool. And it was, they also, a thing I like about one is like, they have all sorts of different rule sets, right? Mm. So they have tie, they have the glory rules, they have tie with four ounce gloves. That's they have, crazy. Then they have their MMA, then they have a ring, and then they have a cage, and they'll run them all on the same night, right? See, it's, Muay Thai now, like, okay, I know mean, a lot of people don't like that I say this, but I don't love Muay Thai. I mean, to me, it's- a little slow. The clinching slows things down. I, I appreciate it. I think they're great. I think old school Muay Thai was a lot more exciting. They were <coughs> faster paced, better with boxing. Yeah. Now it's a little bit more of the gambling game. You know, like they take the first two rounds slow. There's more clinching. A lot of Thai versus Thai fights. They don't want to scrap it out as mm -hmm. much because they, they have to fight next week again. Yeah. So I don't necessarily love the action that comes with it. Um, but a lot of the, the, the fights that I find that happen, they're just – not exciting enough for me. So I find that you put a four ounce glove now into the picture. Now Muay Thai, it's three rounds, small gloves. Muay Thai has never been more exciting for well, me to watch. Did you watch uh, Rod the Tang versus Jonathan Haggerty? Haggerty? Holy oh, fuck. I love Haggerty, man. The <laughs> yeah. kid's a stud. He's I know. good. He's strong. I could not believe that. that Savage body punching. I know. Amazing. Low kicks. Eh? Yeah. But now that's the excitement we need to see in Muay yeah. Thai. Muay Thai is the best now that one FC brought it in. It's a, uh, I like the way that uh, one markets and builds. Like, if you have them following on Instagram, like you're, I'm addicted to one FC on Instagram. Yeah. The way they push Story guys, and, and, nice, yeah, always yeah. behind the scenes yeah, and I stuff. Like it. I watched the uh, Haggerty fight first and the second, like back to back, like three times. He's exciting. Oh right? my god, he's just he's got a really cool style too. Yeah. Like it's not the front kicks. Yeah, and he's he's not. 
it's a good mix of traditional Thai and mm. mo- more modern kickboxing as well. And when he it's, throws his elbows, they're just bad yeah. intentions, yeah. man. Like he whips them like early. Like usually when you watch Muay Thai, they don't throw the elbows early on. Haggerty's throwing them in like that yep. first round. Bang, uh, those cut downs and he skips <clears> in. Like, yeah, yeah, he doesn't care, man. Yeah. He just comes to fight. I'm a I big like fan him. of that guy. I, but Rod Tang, I'm like, He's a fucking animal. Because, you know, he's like 22 or 20. Yeah. yeah he's a baby Fe- still. Fearless. And yeah. you see, it looks like he just ran him over, but Haggerty was hammering him. Yeah. He, but he just walked through everything. Yeah. Like, you, he landed nice combinations. You just take it and then hit him with those body you shots. You see Rod Tang's face. It's all like oh, scar yeah. tissue. That guy can take some yeah. shots, man. But the hook to the body after catching the kick, mm. I'm like, man, that was cool as yeah. shit. Like, oh, yeah. 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 But he that. even Haggerty took it like a champ. He sat down. He's like, okay. Got back up, but the end was coming, right? Because in the third, he got fucking beat up. I'm just yeah. still happy. Glory has control of the kickboxing still. Like, they have yeah. some of the guys, but they don't have the, the main guys. So that's mm-hmm. why I can support it still. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they start taking the kickboxing, which they tried. Yeah. You know, they took Nicky Holtzkin. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Holtzkin's lost twice with them against some young Dutch kid that's good. Ursel. Oh, Ursel. he's, yeah. Those knees, he's scary, man. Nicky's kid's scary. How old is Nicky? Probably 35, 36 now. Yeah, so he's going to be, he's kind of like yeah, he's sliding end, his way. Yeah. But then you see guys like, all those guys have fought uh, the K1 Max, like, the who's in there? Um, the old school guys? Yeah. What's his uh, name still fighting? Uh, the guy that Andy always, Sauer. Andy Sauer still yeah, going. Yeah, Sauer Power still going. And then uh, you see some of those guys still in there. I'm like, gee, how are you still doing this job? You got job, guys man? like Melvin Manhoff still fighting. I know. He's That's fucking, crazy. He's terrifying as Peter well. Peter Ertz will fight sometimes still. Crazy. I have no idea how. Like, the old school, man, I don't know. No. I can't imagine how beat up those guys are. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it's, it's hard. so one thing I always, <coughs> excuse me, admired about your career is how many pro fights did you have? Twelve. Uh, 12? I fourteen. Fourteen. I won it on fourteen and that's, eleven amateur. That's, that's crazy. That's crazy. That says a lot about your, but uh, not just your athleticism, but your IQ. You made it to that point in as the best kickboxer in the world, and in fourteen fights yeah. and years of obviously years of behind the scenes and training. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you see these other guys. Okay, so how many how many fights that Holes can have when you fought him? Probably a yeah, hundred professional, Fucking probably over fifty amateur. As isn't well. that crazy? You know what I mean? Mark like, DeBond had a hundred amateur. Kareem Gaji, sorry, a hundred pro. Kareem Gaji had a hundred pro. Yeah, and, and you and you did that shit in fourteen. My 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 glory debut. I fought a, a Turkish legend oh, who had like amazing. seventy pro fights on my seventh or eighth. Yeah, they brought you there to die. It was yeah. amazing <laughs> in <laughs> Turkey, <laughs> in his hometown. Still, yeah, they still, wanted me to die. Yeah. Still, still one of my favorite. Yeah, been knockouts because it was like clever. You know yeah. what I mean? People don't see that coming. Because right? it was scary too. It was one of those. Uh, it's like let's see what this kickboxing thing's like. I've never fought high level kickboxing, and I always knew that head to head scrap was there. You know, yeah. get in the pocket and just exchange. I didn't know how. Bi- I was like, I'm big. I'm strong. I could probably take this guy. And but he came out that first minute and a half, and I was like, this is what kickboxing is. He yeah. tried to kill me. You know what I mean? And then once I weathered the storm, it was all me after that. But I was yeah. like, if I get good at this area. I will do well. So then that, yeah. from that moment, I'm like, my head-to-head fighting's got to be on point because mm-hmm. these guys are killers, man. They try to kill you. There's no messing around. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, you all have an intelligent approach to it too, right? Always, so yeah. like- uh, Low when kicks. I, yeah, when you were you were showing me how you do low, low kicks, I'm like, I, f- I just always fired low kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? You don't, you never throw a kick unless you, you're sure that guy can't it's check timing, it. timing, yeah. Yeah. I call them free low kicks. Right, you wait yeah. from you wait yeah. on the step or whatever. As soon as you jab me, boom, I, say, I hit you. If I'm in a clinch and you want to disengage and back out, boom, I hit you again. Yeah. So no matter what, my timing is all about free low kicks. Yeah, for sure. Which drives me nuts in MMA. I mean, the guy can basically be one low kick away from being finished, mm-hmm. and what do you know? The you won't throw them no more. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, guys don't look at the leg as a finishing target. They always hit it, hit it, but there's no purpose. There's no finishing. They're just like, let me just keep hitting it. Like, you're going to eventually got to take the leg, finish it. Like, yeah. get the guy. Like, you did all that work for three rounds. And then you start head punching and the buddy's blocking his head and then you don't get finishes. Mm-hmm. So I don't, still don't think guys know how to use them, right? Yeah. That yeah. calf kick's pretty cool, though. Oh, man. It's the worst. Yeah. It's you got hit with a few? Uh, you hit me with it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the, the first time we sparred, I like I know I don't I know I don't know how to kickbox and then and then I, went, I was training at your place and it was a good room of guys it's me you Kendall uh, I think Kennedy uh, what's the name Troy probably oh uh, yeah there. and then uh, Sher- Sheridan sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. and then um, uh, from Finland uh, what's his name uh, Miko uh, yeah, 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 yeah Miko yeah. was there it was a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, I clearly did not deserve to be in that room but you guys let me in the room because I'm me and it was fun <laughs> and I'm like 
I, I, I hold my own because I'm tough and I can kind of take some damage and figure shit out. And then I stood in front of you and I'm like, I don't even, I'm so confused. <laughs> and you hit me. Uh, you hit me with left hook to the body and it chopped the leg. And I sat, I'm like, I, I sat down for a second and I didn't know why I sat down. I wasn't sure if it was from the leg from kick. The leg I the wasn't body. sure if it was from the body. I just knew I needed to fucking time yeah. out. Yeah, so but that's, like, if you, if we started doing jujitsu, it'd be just worse than that. Yeah, I'd no, be just tap him before sure. you even grab me. But it's crazy because people don't understand how, act, like, they just see, like, I'm not ignorant to it. You know what I mean? I understand how much technique and skill there is involved, but I never knew how complicated it really, mm. really was. And to, to, and it never under, understood the levels until I was in a room, room with you. And I'm like, dude, you know fucking nothing. Being tough is yeah. not going to help you today. It's actually going to get you killed. That Bruce Lee quote, I say it all the time. It said, uh, when you first learn an art, you know, a kick is a kick and a punch is a punch, right? So it's just when you first see it on TV, it's like, oh, the guy's punching and kicking. As you learn the art, a kick is no longer a kick and a punch is no longer a punch. When you realize how detailed things are and the science behind it, it's like, man, this is so complicated. I know nothing. But then when you master the art, they say a punch is a punch and a kick is a kick. It's pretty deep. Yeah, absolutely. I absolutely. got deep on you there for absolutely, a second. Absolutely. Had to bring it deep. <laughs> absolutely. It's, yeah. uh, it's my favorite, one of my favorite lines. Because especially now with jujitsu, I'm so frustrated with jujitsu. One, I could only train it once a week if I have time. Um, I'm trying to jump. I would like to do gi, but... I've been doing no gi now because mm. it's helping with my MMA coaching and stuff yeah. like that. But me doing it once a week, I come back and I'm getting, I suck. I, I need to practice more than once a week to be good at it. So yeah. I, I, at the point, I'm just like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> because it's like I can't suck anymore it's yeah. just I can't go through that learning curve right now it's stressing me just out taking your ball and going home man. yeah like I'm just so pissed <laughs> off like if I can't win fuck I'm it. strong yeah I'm strong so I can get away for five minutes but after that I'm done I'm gassed out I'm getting calf cramps I'm like, I don't get calf cramps I'm, you know my calves are I'm having to who, drink who electrolytes were who are you were trained with um, was it no I haven't no. done any of the Arthur it's name's Marcus okay yeah yeah, yeah. alright all right. Um, I would like to do Arthur's class I mean yeah. I want to put on the gi put the gi on with monkey I know. I've asked him a couple oh, times. Fuck, dude. I've asked him a couple times. That guy's times. an alien. Yeah, but you know what it is? Like the other day he came by the gym and it's like, you know his personality. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm going to mess around. I'm going to pretend out I'm coming out training. So I, put, I had a gi on in the back and I put it on. And I was like, hey, look at me. I got my gi on. What does he do? He gets all excited, grabs my lapel, takes me down, starts freaking lapel choking me. I was like, this is why I don't put it on. <laughs> this is why I don't want to train with you because you're going to bully me. You're like since we were kids, you've been picking on me and now I have to deal with it again. So I got to get better before I see him. Uh, yeah. And I got to get better before him because he'll bully me. He'll pick on me. He'll... Yeah, I know he's he is an anomaly. That guy, like he's always been super talented and gifted at jiu-jitsu. He has a brain that works like no other. But I'm watching him now. I'm like, he's in his 40s and he's way fucking better than he's really? ever made before. Like he trains with all the Brazilians at Action Reaction mm -hmm. uh, and all the uh, Cicero Costa guys, like, and they're all like 25, like world champs, like just freaks. And they're they look at him like, dude, you're a fucking alien because yeah, yeah. he goes out and just fucks them up right really because they or at least at least competes with competes these guys with, with yeah, these guys yeah. who are world class and 20 years younger right like he's an he's an alien but that's just the way his brain works you know what he's like yeah. he's a fucking weirdo so but it's that your whole community's been like that <laughs> the whole guys that you all came up with yeah you guys are all still i would say all martial artists oh for sure i mean you look this at that rare, you look you know? at that original room it's like monkey marco uh, myself, Tony, like yeah, you guys are all, and they're all we're all still somehow in the game teaching yeah. whatever. But Monkey's teaching, running his business, and still going it's competing, the competing at, like, at like every weekend yeah, too, like every at, other weekend. I don't know how world class levels too. Right, he's at yeah. fighting IBJJF all the time. He's a monster. So, but uh, but he doesn't do anything else either. Right, yeah, like yeah. I'm like nah, I like beer and food and traveling. Yeah. And, like he's just like kill kill. Yeah, like but, he doesn't eat bad all the time. Like he won't. It's the ice cream and sweets he'll get him, but like he's always healthy. Like I feel bad. Like I'm in good shape, but every time I'm around him, I'm like jeez, I'm I know. Like, feel fat. I'm the same. You know? like, should I eat if he's looking at me? Because since we were kids, he'd always like poke at my stomach when I was young. I was like, man, I get the guilt too. Like it's, it's the same thing, man. I'm just like, he, he, I almost look at, looking down at me because I'm eating something I'm yeah. not supposed to. You know what I mean? Because like I know you're going home and having chicken and avocados, but yeah. fuck off. I don't yeah, know. okay, right? So yeah, I don't know. 
whatever. How do you feel about the way MMA has gone, man? Since you were like, you know, that pioneer uh, and then now here, like, is it a big change? Because I had a conversation huge. with someone the other day and it kind of stressed me out that the martial arts sides that kind of started with martial arts is kind of losing it. With MMA, with kickboxing, there's no, jiu-jitsu still has it, but they're still bowing. They're still the professor. Like yeah. in, in kickboxing, MMA, that's almost gone now. Yeah. You're at the, you're at the disposal of the fighter, you know? Yeah. Oh, I want to train at this time. The fighters feel like they got way too much Prima control. Madonna's, man. The cold. Yeah. And, <coughs> wait, it's wait, too much now. It's a shame. It, because, but it is, it's a sport now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's not a martial art anymore because the jiu-jitsu side is always going to, and the karate and the kickbox, and there's always going to be that martial arts aspect to it. But the moment you put any competitive into it, it changes things, right? So um, it kind of messes it up where you see, you still see the Brazilians, a lot of the, like high level jiu-jitsu guys come into the UFC and stuff like that. And you'll see them act like, yeah, like bow for sure. and whatever, and do the, do the things that, you know, a traditional guy would do, but no one else does it. I think the way there's, I think there's pros and cons to the way that the game has changed over the years. Like the level of, it's gone up. It's fucking insane. Yeah. Uh, I look at the 155ers now, I'm like, fuck insane. that. Yeah. Like, I, and my, my balls are like, you could be that guy. My brain's like, dude, that guy will fucking eat your lunch. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I, if, what what's a shame is like people don't even know the difference you know mm. what i mean like i can appreciate how talented and how much like how much better these guys are but the average fan just sees two knuckleheads killing each exactly. other you know what i mean exactly. so that's uh why i've always appreci appreciated the japanese mma because the fans really actually appreciate and understand what's going on where north america they're still it's still so, that. Yeah. And you always go back to that guy at the, the first just UFC. Bleed just guy? bleed motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that guy, right? People see still it there, like that. Yeah. yeah. Still but there. I I like the fact that the level has gone up and there's opportunities for guys to compete and train and make money and whatever else. But there's also it's lost that uh it's lost that respect, you know what I mean? Where the all the trash talking and I get I get that stuff. You gotta sell it and you gotta get paid, but I don't know. It takes for me who comes from that background, you know, of actually being a traditional martial traditional martial artist. It takes away from it in a way. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, it's different. It's weird. Yeah. And now that because the ranking system isn't real as well, it almost it fucks a sport up as well too, right? So like you're ne not necessarily getting the two best guys in the world fighting for a world title, mm -hmm. right? If they talk them ways into it, or the ticket sales put them in that position, which you know, so it's the whole thing's controlled by money. It was kind of fun when you were fighting for free because then you was. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. almost real in a way. You know what I mean? Like you wanted to fight each other, find out who the fucking man was. There was yeah. nothing else on the line other than that. Yeah, right. It wasn't money. It wasn't like it was you and your re the respect of your team. You know what I mean? That you wanted to earn. And so it's definitely changed some things. Like I, I do like the uh, uh, yeah, I do like the the level of athleticism and the and the studs that are in it now. So there's great things that. But at the same time, it has lost a lot of its flavor. You know yeah. what I mean? For me, I don't sit around and watch fights anymore, hardly. Right? Uh, we, I know we got to talk about something on the show. So I'm like, watch the highlights tonight. Just quickly. Right? Yeah, and yeah, I'm yeah. like, okay, at least I know who won. You, you don't know? follow the UFCs as much anymore? It's just... Hardly ever. No. Okay. Uh, like I said I, earlier, I've watched a lot of kickboxing now. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm, <clears throat> I'm starting to pay more attention to jiu-jitsu again because I'm starting to enjoy it. it. Seems like it's growing, though. Like if you see all the different... Yeah. Absolutely. leagues and the world championships yeah and. it's huge absolutely massive but for me it's like i do it every day and i'm like you eh, get out of it and i get injured so i don't get to play so yeah, it makes yeah. it makes the job hard sometimes but uh i still like the um i still like what the brazilians and the like properly trained guys bring into the into the mixed martial arts the arts so that, that kind of brings it back down to earth right that the, they bring, they still bring a lot of respect in and like and honor and, and and act like how they're supposed to. But I still, I still love it. I just don't pay attention as much. You yeah. know what I mean? Because it'll make you fucking crazy too, right? Like you're trying to like. There was a time when all I did was watch fights, and my wife's like, "What the fuck, dude?" Yeah, you know what I mean? Enough. Like that's enough. You know? That's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm trying to find new hobbies, but it's hard. It's hard, man. I, I it's like I've tr I started shooting guns. You know, I'm into like going to the range and trying tactical shooting. I I've tried a little bit of jujitsu to take my mind off of kickboxing, and then I listen to podcasts. I'm trying to listen to non-fight podcasts. Yep. It's just I can't, man. I'm I stuck. I do the same I'm thing. Trapped. I feel like because now I understand what it's like. I have a I have a kid. I'm like, okay, we're gonna put you in this, and we're gonna put you in this. We try to find all these and diversify then he's like, his brain. Yeah, and then he's like, no, I don't like it. No, like I feel like I'm the same thing. I'm like, ooh, I'm gonna try this. I try archery for like six months, yeah, and I tried nah. this over here, and I'm like, just get bored quick because there's nothing like fighting. Yeah, man. 
Man, I wake dude. up, I look at social media, everyone I follow, fighters. Yeah. I go work out, everyone on my team, we're fighting and things. Then I coach at night. Then I come home, hey, there, there, there's fights on. Or I got to study fights, so it's too much fighting sometimes. Yeah. I like it. I love it. But yeah. I'm trying to find other interests, man. I'm trying, I got to find something. I don't know. Anything, I've tried. Anything. Man. I have Give tried. Anything. I've tried so many different hobbies. I'm trying to read sometimes, <laughs> but they end up being fight books that I'm reading. And it's just like, I feel the can't same, escape, I, man. I feel the same way, man. I don't know. I just, it, and that's the hard, everyone thinks that, for me, they think I train all the time. Like, you know, I'm never on the, like, I'm on the mats of it and I'm just standing there. I yeah. don't actually get to train, you know what I mean? And like, so it's, I, I'm looking for a hobby that I can do that actually keeps me in shape as well, too. Because yeah. I, I started doing judo because it was, you know, like. Have you I, tried the yoga? Fuck that, man. Okay. I, I, know, I, I do a little bit at home. I, it's my New Year's resolution. I'm going to try to do one, like, hot one yoga. session a week. Because I know how the benefits of yeah. it. But I'm like, dude, that's not a fucking hobby. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. no. It's still doing exercises, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's got to be something fun, too. Yeah, yeah, man. You know what it is? I don't know what There's it gotta be. be. A comp- there's got to be a com- competitive side to it or why are we yeah. doing it? That's why I thought the shooting, I'd get into some shooting like courses and like the tactical stuff. I've learned how to holster. I've, I've got, I'm, I have an action range I go to. I, I just, I'm trying. That's the one I'm trying with, but it's still hard. Yeah, I know. It's not the same. Uh-huh. I'm like, I, <laughs> I tried, um, I, I joined a dodgeball league. Hey, there you go. No Fuck. way. Yeah, How long did that last? Did <laughs> it last for a bit? Two sessions. That's it. Because <laughs> you rip your shoulders yeah, out. Yeah. Bo- game one. Game one, torn rotator both sides. I was out for like six months. Yeah. I went back the next. I went back to the next game because I didn't want to look like a pussy. Yeah. Because I was out there and it was funny because the league was like this woman at the gym. She's like, I heard her over talking. I'm like, I'm over her talking. I'm like, I'll do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I show up and there's like, you know, some women in their 40s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and then a bunch, a few younger guys, and then there's me. Who's like an athlete, and yeah, I'm like, yeah. and I'm like, I'm there to, f- they're there to play. I'm like, motherfuckers, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna knock win. you out with this ball. And, and it was, will this ball knock you out if I hit you in the face? And then, <laughs> and that was, I was mad about that too, because you, if you hit someone in the head, you're out. No, it didn't count. Oh, okay. You can only sh- hit from the waist down. I'm like, you guys are fucking pussies. Why, why are we here? <laughs> so I, we score up and start playing, and uh, my team's getting crushed because everyone is like, everyone's women in their 40s, and yeah. I'm out there by myself. And it's like five guys on their team, and they're Going like, if nuts. you and if you hit these, they were actually like, this is our league. Yeah. And if you hit them, they get fucking mad and like we're shit talking you and stuff. And like one guy wanted, to, like I'm like, are we gonna fight? Like what's yeah. going on here, mm-hmm. right? And so it like that, that which actually kind of made it fun, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But that, yeah, I ruined myself. I couldn't work. I couldn't yeah. train. I couldn't do anything after two games. I, like both sides were yeah. ripped. I was screwed forever. I was a gym teacher, so obviously we played dodgeball. I'd have my behavior boys, and they pissed me off. And it'd be fun because I'd talk to the trash, being like, "You've been pissing me off all day. Get on the other side of that line. We're gonna start killing each other." But literally, our shoulders would oh. be so sore. I had to pull out. Like sometimes I'd be like, "Okay, guys, I got a fight coming up in like three, four weeks. I'm not playing dodgeball because I'm gonna." And those light balls because they're they're light so you want to yeah. throw them even harder and you just destroy your yeah because there's man. nothing on the end of it either. yeah you yeah. just got to throw them even further but yeah you got to warm up like it's terrible man but so, i feel you we play with our kids and we'll get everyone ripping around and, and we have those they're just like little happy happy face balls you know what i mean yeah. so you're not gonna you can't kill anyone but i'm like the rule is if i hit you right you owe me five burpees yeah, yeah, but if go. i hit, if i hit you in the head you owe me 10 yeah, yeah, right? yeah. i'm going i'm eight headshots every time yeah, right for sure. I tee of off course. on these kids it's fucking like i told you the rules bitch if you yeah. didn't want to play you didn't have to play yeah. it's the best right so when i'm having a bad day i just fuck these kids up it's amazing, this is, yeah, it's amazing. The best. and the, yeah. and the parents are in the waiting room like yeah yeah get them fuck, get, fuck the it. parents are always the best though the parents are always like can you hit them harder today <laughs> i'm sure you get that all day for sure yeah actually you have People bring their kids in the door and like, yeah, I'll beat on them a little extra. I'm yeah. like, I got you covered. I got you. You good? Um, <clears throat> I got a question. At your yeah. gym, are your gym, at your gym, when you're running kids' classes, do parents have access to the kids? I don't or- have kids' classes. Not- what? Yep. What the fuck? I know. How? It stresses me out. I know. Um, it's just spacing issue and timing. Um, we're just, what, 7,500 square feet? But uh, our first class is at 5. And at 5 o'clock, I have a beginner's class and I have an intermediate class going. And I have then there's always – I have three spaces in the gym. And they're always all being full. And I don't have space to put a kid's program. Wow, that is insane. The only time it would be would be 4 o'clock. But kids can't finish school and get to the gym by 4 o'clock. That's crazy. That, I've never heard of that. Yeah, so no kids. Yeah, it's huh. it's usually, I would say, you have to be like a bigger high school kid. Yeah. Huh. Every other gym in the world is like seventy percent kids. That's all. No. That's my bread and butter, man. All no. my most all of my adults. Kids. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. I want to be. 
I want to be you even more now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck. I see. I like the kids though. I would, you know, I don't know. For I've me, it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's, but I mean, every time I see you post the pictures, I'm like, that's nice. And you see all the kids smiling around you. They're jumping I'd, on I'd you. I had to pay them. Yeah, yeah. there you go. <laughs> no burpees today. If you guys that's, hug me that's and crazy. pretend to like me. I've never heard of a gym lab really? like that. Cause for us too, when we all started, we're like, I just want to train fighters and this and that. And then you yeah. realize, man, I'm pretty hungry. Yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, got to yeah. make the money. Right. And then it's a fine line of like, you want to, I don't sell belts, man. You got to haul ass. I don't care how old yeah, you yeah, are, yeah. right? So that's yeah. that's a one of the best part of my jobs. So I can instill that in the kids as they go, right? But over, I have a great gym manager uh, and uh, Jackie. And since she took over, like probably a couple of years ago, my kids' program is like quadruples. Like nice. I, I have hundreds of kids out there now, that's right? Crazy. So you got to be fucking on point all the time. They pay. It's a really hard part of the job, but they pay. pay what time bills. are your kids' classes? I do. Uh, <clears throat> I think I got li- little tiny kids like four and a half to like six seven they're at 5 15 mm. and then i get another group from like you know seven or eight till about 11 or 12 right after that for 45 so it's a half an hour class 45 minute class and then i Jeez. got my teenagers and then your adults are and night then, and then my adults are right after this you oh. just brought them all back to back i only had the one mat space right otherwise i'd be stacking them up yeah have different. kids and women's kickboxing at the same time yeah, yeah. at one in. point some points of the gym we have a jujitsu class going my advanced class and there's a women's class in the ring so yeah. like we always have the three yeah. different areas there's yeah. certain nights of what the math i got boxing going on one side and then no key on the other and whatever else but so our kids classes are so big now like i'll get 30 40 kids in a class Same. right so like you gotta there's no room for anything else right and we keep our parents uh separate yeah we have a viewing room with a cat with a tv yeah, oh yeah, man yeah. i learned that shit the hard way like because even i just don't want you involved right yeah you gave yeah. them to me for an hour get the fuck out of the way yeah they always right. want to step over or like well there is it's whether they're coaching or not like or talking to the kids in the matter of coaching like the kids always looking for their parents yeah. approval right i'm like i need you to look at me yeah. you know what i mean yeah. so they parents change everything so i'm like i stick them in this little room and the room's so small that they all get uncomfortable with each other and then they, they leave just, they just leave anyway <laughs> i'm like go. i'm like your kid's safe go buy groceries man this is Do your something. hour yeah, smoke yeah. join the parking lot there I don't you go care. that works too. yeah right be a good dad <laughs> top smoke <laughs> but be happy when you pick me up yeah so but parents fuck everything up man especially now i have my son in in basketball and you're like i watch basketball's pretty chill compared to like stuff like hockey and stuff but you see the parents interactions with the kids and the way they like oh it's brutal it's crazy man like it's, they're insane yeah it's just the little things where uh these kids are they're 11 years old and they're playing and everyone's in the so kid steals the ball Right. And the place goes, oh, and the, and not even that. Out, the yeah. parent, the parents are like, freak out like you won a world championship. Right. Like it's the biggest yeah. thing. I'm like, Every, it's good. Calm down. Yeah. But that's his fucking job. You, you can cheer and you can congratulate him after the game or what, you know, when he gets, but to put that much hype into something so small, you're fucking yeah. ruining this yeah, kid, yeah, yeah. man. Cause he's going to want that shit all the time. Yeah. You're, and where are we going out? Can, where can we go, Derek? Can we go after the game? for a treat i'm like that was your treat bitch yeah you just like, got everyone cheered yeah man was like good enough and i paid for i paid for your ball i drove you to fucking niagara falls <laughs> yeah. like no man that's your ice cream like fuck yeah. off you know what i mean like but it's different now yeah it's crazy man well I, I never got to play sports as a kid ever you played a lot of sports when you were young um it was soccer and yeah. taekwondo of course it was soccer yeah uh, <laughs> you have to do a little bit come on yeah it's in your blood yeah Right on. Um, what was it? What's the uh, who's the biggest contributing factor in your career? You think uh, outside of Jean Claude Van Damme and Stallone, uh, I would say probably my pops. Yeah. Um, I mean, just watching those shows with him was just a huge thing for me. You know, like yeah. I was four years old, obsessed with blood sport kickbox, and then Dad would just kind of uh, kind of train with me. We'd like. Yeah. recreate the Rocky scenes together when we were kids. And then uh, around four, he wanted to take me to the local martial arts gym, which is Taekwondo nearby. And they said, come back when I was older. I think mm-hmm. So from four to seven, my dad kind of just trained me at home his own. And then um, at seven, I started Taekwondo. And then uh, did that well, got my black belt really young, which again, I don't know if that means anything to anyone, but I got it really young. And then I met someone like Monkey mm-hmm. Nanku there who was pro- professionally fighting and hearing about you and everybody. And that kind of was like, man, this pro fighting thing is pretty cool too. So I've always had that in my mind to be a pro athlete mm-hmm. in something. So then uh, Taekwondo, then I went to play soccer. Then I thought maybe I'd be a little bit of a pro soccer player. Then I played university football, but I always was exceptional when it came to fighting. Mm-hmm. I was I was a decent soccer player. 
decent football player. Uh, you made but I was right. a phenomenal, you, you know. You made striker. the right choice. You made yeah. the right choice. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul was a factor in your career. He was yeah, your yeah, coach Paul for a long was, time. Right? Yeah. Is he um, the guy you got your low kicks from? Yeah. 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 He was a low kicker. Yeah. Where the hell did he get it from? Uh, he worked with Gary Goodrich for a bit. Ah. So he was in Japan a lot and he was just uh, hanging around a lot of the Japanese and the Brazilians and they were really good with their low kicks. Mm-hmm. So then he kind of took it, created a system and just really focused on that. And then whatever he taught me, like I just took to uh, a new level with it. Just it's it's just a, a strike for me. That's just it's so easy. Yeah, it's so easy, and I just don't see people doing it, and I'm happy because I think that one strike kind of has kind of made a name for me. It's kind of like yeah. in the old days you saw Ernesto Hoos, Mister Low Kick, Mister Perfect. So he was the guy for low kicks, and then no one even threw low kicks much. And we saw a little bit from Jose Aldo, mm-hmm. uh, which stresses me out that he doesn't throw them enough anymore, which pisses me off. Mm-hmm. But. Um, yeah, then it came to me, and I think it was my fight with Raymond Daniels and the amount of times I throw low kicks. I don't think many people do anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a lot. Um, yeah, there's a lot of them, that's for sure. That was a fun one to watch, too. Like, It's funny how people people actually still think, you're like, I gotta take that. It's just a kick in the leg. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right. Yeah, after 30 of them. Yeah, in the same spot. Every, every day, time. All day. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's, it's, the, it's the fucking worst. So uh, we got some, some we do this fan per- questions. Yeah, perfect you have fans, right. eh? You know that? Do I? Yeah, a oh, few. They, they love nice. Joe. Other than me. <laughs> Other than you? Uh, so I, I think this first one you kind of answered a little earlier, but the guy just, uh, Kale asked, uh, he said, not many athletes can walk away from the sport while at the top uh, when it's best for their health. What were the final signs or warning signs that made you realize this was the time? So it was definitely concussions for you. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It, it was the concussions. And at that point, it's just, I wanted longevity in the sport. I've seen too many colleagues um, stuttering, um, forgetting things. Uh, and again, we just talked about people who have influenced me in my career. I said, Gary Goodridge used to come to my gym with Paul all the time and train and spar. And, you know, it got to the point where, like, I saw documentaries after mm. where he was having a hard time speaking. He was on antipsychotic, antidepressants. And I was a big um, spokesperson for CTE and concussions and, and brain injuries. Um, and just seeing the older guys in the sport, the way they were talking, the way they were moving and their quality of life. I was like, I'm a smarter guy than this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so I decided to, yeah, it was the toughest thing I did, but I gave up my world title for, um, yeah, safety. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Like hearing. You I talk mean, about a lot it. of people are like, oh, why don't you do? It? I was like, yeah, but now I'm I'm putting my brain on risk for your entertainment. Yeah, you know mm-hmm. what I yeah, mean. Yeah, for sure. Because you know, it's it, at that point, it's all about. Um, I mean, you got to think like when you're at a time and you're down and you're and you're in your one of your worst phases, like you seeing your family there for you and seeing how much it impacts them, and you're like, oh yeah, I don't know if I want to impact my family. Like if I didn't have a family, I mean, I understand. Like if I was struggling on the streets and. I had no parents, but I'm like, my parents love me. My, my sisters love me, you know? Like, what am I going to do? Continually, you know, put myself and my family through that stress. So at that point, you know, like I said, I made more money commentating. Life is better now. So the decision was good. Yeah. A, a big thing with concussions is, as well, too, like, it's like, it's not always like immediate, right? Like no. for me, it was like just the last couple of years. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah. You know what I mean? With anxiety and depression CTE, and like man. all this shit. And then CTE. going and seeing some, a professional like doing therapy for it was the best thing I ever did because I didn't know what yeah. was wrong. You know what I mean? Like it's even crazy. these vertigo and stuff. They're like, yeah, that's probably could have been from the multiple concussions. Like, Who really? knows? They're, yeah. They said that's all these things happen. That's what CT is. It takes a while for it to hit you. We, it might not hit us until we're 50. You know, and then all of a sudden we got early dementia at 50 when we could have had it at 60. So, I mean, um, the big thing now is just for all fighters, it's that safety part, man. Mm-hmm. You get hit, hit in head, follow the protocols, take your time, take your fish oils, take your CBDs, yeah. be well hydrated, get rest between training sessions. You don't need to have a concussion and train the next day. So, I think that um, for longevity of a career, because we're going to do it anyways. Yeah. I still spar. You know yeah. what I mean? I still spar a lot. but. It's what I do in between those sparring mm-hmm. sessions that I think is the key. And you're not sparring every fucking day like a knucklehead exactly. like we used to, right? Exactly. So, all right. Um, Greg Woodrow, he would like to know uh, who's your favorite Canadian up-and-comer? It could be boxing, uh, sorry, it could be mm. kickboxing, MMA, whatever you want. Um, I'm actually really impressed right now with uh, the, the kid from TKO that went to the UFC, Charles Jourdain. He, yeah, man. To, yep. knock, to go to Korea, to be a huge underdog, to come out and get a nice finish, I think... Um, right now, I think to watch him is pretty exciting, man. I think our potential for Canadian 
combat sports has kind of died down a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's just me. It was huge for a few it was years. Huge, and then it kinda, yeah. Yeah, but the UFC's not coming as much. A lot of the top guys we were working with, like the Antonios, the Chad Laprees, yeah. the Sam Stouts, the Mark Hominix, Hominix, the, yeah. like The big era of Canadian MMA is kind of slowed down. So to see someone like Jordan be a good striker, to be fantastic, to do well. Um, we've connected in the past. Actually got, he was on a podcast the other day and he mentioned me saying how he doesn't understand how my low kicks are so good and strong and his are so crappy or something <laughs> like that. It was French translation. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm excited for him, man. I think the kid's good. He's talented. Yeah, he's well, exciting. He fights well. hard. Yeah, so that's probably one I've been looking forward to. That's awesome. Uh, so uh, uh, Spinning Backfish, shout out to Spinning Backfish, by the way. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're curious. What do you think is the most realistic boxing movie of all time? The most realistic boxing movie of all time. Well, the Italian Stallion's got to be the most real. But uh, um, Rocky One was pretty cool. That you whole story. You can't fuck with that one. Can you beat Rocky One? I mean, I do like the. Uh, they're pretty cool now. Like the new Creed's pretty good. Creed's pretty to cool. see that mm-hmm. struggle, to see him. But I still think the Rocky One, man. Just the way of him being from Philly and him, like the whole story behind him. I think the storytelling really made us connect. So I'm going Rocky One. Rocky One. Yeah, I good. You can't fuck with Rocky One. Watch Cinderella Man, man. You cry Cinderella like a, Man's you pretty cry good. Cry like too. a little girl. Oh, yeah. What do you think about Never Back Down? Have you ever seen that fuck movie? Fuck off, man. <laughs> <laughs> is this, is this a touchy subject? Don't bring for that you? shit to me. It is such a bad movie. Oh, but, yeah, it's, it's someone gave it to They're me terrible as terrible now. Uh, we had grading or something, and they, they gave it to me as a gift, like a DVD. It's, <laughs> it's still sitting in the I package. I think there's Never Back Down, too. Maybe we got to get you that of course there is. Oh <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna watch until I have the entire, the entire set. Yeah, 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 right. Then binge uh, watch it. Okay, we have uh, one more. We'll ask. Uh, uh, yeah. So Dan Mayer just wants to know who was your toughest opponent. Uh, toughest opponent. Mm, toughest opponent. Let me see. There's. I mean, of my glory opponents, I would have to say probably Holtzkin. Yeah. But um, one of the toughest fights in my career was probably my fourth pro fight. I fought a a really tall guy by the name of Ben Case. Uh, He was tall. He was southpaw. And he was awkward and Muay Thai. So he would lean back against the ropes, use his teeps, use his knees, use long distance really well. So it was really hard for me to finish him. I think I got a, a finish in the fifth round, but he made me scrap. And it was one of the more awkward guys I fought. So I would say him and probably Holtzkin. But again, the Holtzkin in my mind was it was the second fight of one night, Mm -hmm. um, which made it more difficult. Um, if you watched the fight, I was hurting his legs, man. If I had full juice in the, and, and I had full power to sit in there, it would have been a totally different fight. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think what made that fight more difficult was I just fought 30 minutes before the, the, the top point karate fighter of all time. 20 minutes later, I had to fight one of the best welterweights of all time. So I think that was the challenge of being in a tournament, being in Japan, jet lag, the big stage, um, and fighting Nikki Holtzkin. So that's what made it extra, you know, difficult. Yeah, but, uh, Nikki's one of the greatest ever man yeah, like still would it be yeah man. it's not uh, and now yeah. i have one one random took, question took him 100 years. fights so fuck yeah, him yeah <laughs> <laughs> fuck him tell him uh you guys mentioned earlier that uh you specifically said that public speaking was scary i'm curious would you guys find public speaking scary yeah than fighting? i would say so scary uh, than fighting though yeah um like, for me i would rather you? fight yeah because when i'm fighting it's just me and him i don't really focus on you the do, people you outside autopilot right i'm autopilot like yeah. it's you when my hands are wrapped that's when the switch goes. Like, I could be talking to you like this. Once the hand gets wrapped, boom, the blank stare hits, and that's it. Like, at that point, like, I'm just, like, looking, I'm pacing, I'm walking. There's no talking to me. As soon as the hands are wrapped and warm-up starts, I'm done. Mm. I walk down with that narrow focus, and that's it. So, with commentating now, you're a little bit more relaxed. You're looking. You don't want to – everyone can – one mistake, you know? It's like, damn, everyone's going to hear me. And Yeah. Like, even the small mistakes, you'll be talking all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, you make a little small mistake, like – you won't notice it when you rewatch it, but you think everybody heard the mistakes. So you start sweating more and you start panicking <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm not natural at it. I mean, there's some people I think more natural, but I'll be really good at it because I'll work at it. If anything, yeah. I'm the same. I enjoy doing the public speaking. Like it's still exciting to me. You know what I mean? And, uh, Fighting's more scary. It's scarier than anything. I don't care what anyone says. So yeah, you get in the zone and whatever else. You can say what you want. You're shitting your pants. Yeah. Right? It's scary. Yeah. But the public speaking thing, you're nervous, but the consequences are nothing. Mm-hmm. Like, you yeah. me- you mess up. So you would rather public mm-hmm. speak than fight? No, fuck that. I didn't say that. Okay. No. <laughs> I didn't say that. I would rather, it's easier. I would rather, or it's I, less stress. It's less stress, less right? Stress. I would rather fight than do anything in the world, man. I, I like that. Fuck. I, I like I'll that. fight you in a fucking phone booth for free with no one watching. And so yeah. I'm okay with it. So we done though? You done now with it or is yeah, something for sure. sparking? Uh, my brain doesn't want it anymore. If I even 
brought it up, my friends and my family would lynch me because like I said, I did Thailand and that was beautiful. The effects of after that, like I was fucked up forever because it was, the fight was easy. You know, I had, I took a lot of damage getting ready for that and messed my brain up real bad. And it took a lot of work to get me back. You fought uh, again though, didn't you? Back uh, home. You did another no, I one did, locally. No, I did that first. And then you went to Thailand. Yeah, and then I went to Thailand. Okay. I was just knocking off the rust. Just to make sure. Yeah. Well, I did, yeah, it's just like, it was in you know, Oshawa too. I couldn't pass it up. It was next, yeah, yeah, yeah. next to my house, right? And then, no, I'm, I won't, I'm not going to fight again. Uh, in a perfect world, I would like to compete in jiu-jitsu, right? So that's kind of what I'm gearing at right now. I'm, I'm going to drill and take it easy and train and see if I can get my body back into a position where maybe I can go do a tournament right. or something. Because I've never competed at black belt, so I would like to knock that off my list. So I, what do you have to do? What, what would you recommend for the body? What are you taking right now? Uh, as you like stretching, foam I, rolling. I try to eat as clean as possible, which is the biggest thing, right? Because for your joints and stuff, and then, and then, uh, I'm actually trying to stretch, which is something yeah, I've never yeah. done in my career. And then, yeah, you just do the right um, physio and Cairo and this and All that, that just, fun stuff. Yeah, man, I spend as many hours a, a week on a, on the bed getting worked on as I do training. You it's know all in I mean? your neck. Yeah, yeah. I had my six and seven fused. Hey. Right, so I've just kind of like stuck. Is that, that old technology now? Is there new stuff you can do? For sure. Or if like, you're a rich American, you can never die. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? I'd be I'd still stem be, selling. Yeah, yeah, everything else, right? Regenerating like, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's just not. It's just not there. You know what I mean? So it, it is, and it's done now. It is what it is. But once you have a surgery like that, everything else starts to go as well, yeah. right? So, like all the other, I have degenerative disc disease, and I have two more herniations, and that that messes up your shoulders. So now my both my shoulders See are the gone. Grappling, man. Yeah, I know. But. Striking, everyone's like, oh yeah, your brain might be a little bad. But at least your body's all right. Yeah, it's I, like I, one or the other, you know. <laughs> but seeing your guys' fingers from all the rolling, oh, you ever and look, the yeah, necks. look at monkeys' fingers, yeah, they're disgusting. Gross. Uh, ears, you guys get the ears. My ears are nice. <laughs> I get compliments on how nice my ears are still. Like, right. it's, it's you're just, just starting. Nice. I'll fix your ears for you. <laughs> <laughs> Start rubbing it. Yeah, come train, yeah. come train. Everyone in my place is got bad ears because we're fucking goons and we're notorious yeah. for being goons. I'd be that goofy guy that comes in with like the singlet with the big head the headphones <laughs> yeah. on coming into wrestling practice but I'd be rock, I'd, I'd be rock the ear pads probably those ear muffs oh man they're badges of honor yeah. alright I think uh, I think we gotta get rolling actually I, I think, think our, so. our time is up so I just gotta I gotta plug real quick as uh uh, on March 29th is the third annual t uh, Toronto Police Charity Rollathon, thon okay? and it's at the Toronto Police College like if you're uh, like it's for sick kids and it's it's massive we do a fundraiser every year like I'm like involved very small we send my guys and we roll whatever else but if you want to go roll and, and train some juicy with lots of really good guys and for a great cause like uh, check it out um uh, it's floating around social media and just put your name in there's a $20 participation fee to get in it all goes to charity so check it out it's at the police college downtown so great cause go choke your friends Maybe. anything else clap away I think that's everything alright fuck that was uh, that was awesome that was pretty good eh? did it? We, we, should hang out, we should hang out all the time I, know. I was gonna say <laughs> it's quick we could keep going uh, <laughs> yeah, I know we're getting we're getting kicked out. We'll do it so. again. <laughs> All right. Well, well, I'll catch up yeah, with you real soon. I know how awesome you are at returning text. Yeah. So you just sent me an address. You didn't ask me a question. You didn't. What, you just sent me an address. <laughs> what did you want me to say? Thank you for sending the address. Well, I don't know. I, like, I, fuck I got that. it. Fuck I got that. Because we want confirmation. We go. Yeah. Yeah. I do. So uh, you're the crazy <laughs> boyfriend now. I have to reply <laughs> hey, within a certain see, time, or you get upset. He referred to me as the boyfriend. <laughs> crazy hey? boyfriend. Thanks. You're the best yeah. girlfriend ever. Oh. <laughs> Why can't we both be boyfriends? Come on, man. 2020. Yes. I can't figure out how that works. Yeah. All right. <laughs> cool. I think we're out of here. Man, that was right, awesome. Brother. Thanks a lot. Appreciate Good it, advice, man. Eh? Boom. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Boys. Pleasure to meet you. It was an honor. Nice to meet you.